Perhaps you've seen uh, beautiful formed metal like this in real life and wondered how to make it in SolidWorks. And it's actually pretty easy. Uh, not only can you uh, make this, but you can also use equations to quickly uh, and effectively update uh, what you're working on in real time. So you don't have to go and edit the model to sort of dial in the, the uh, perfect look. Perhaps I would prefer five spokes instead of six. I can update that in real time. Likewise, uh, I might want to go to eight spokes. Whatever the look that you're looking for, you can use equations to get this uh, profile to update. Um, notice also that we have some tangent lines here, and these don't actually end on vertical. We'll address that as we make um, a model in this video as well. I'm going to get started by opening up a new part. And I'm going to create a uh, generic sketch on the front plane. If I imagine I'm making a, a maybe perhaps a lamp, a table lamp, um, <clears throat> there we go. So we'll dimension uh, five inches here. We'll probably do 0.125 here, and I think we'll go one inch here. And you know this is all arbitrary dimensioning. 0.5 here. With this line highlighted, we'll revolve. There's a generic base. Uh, let's jump on the front plane and make another generic sketch. And I'm going to uh, do a section view so that I can reference uh, a little bit easier this bottom base. Um, we also may want to make the diameter of the spoke that will sweep along here. And so we can make this adjustable with equations. To do that, I'll refresh because equations will close the sketch anyway. We'll go to insert equations and I'll add a global variable. We'll call this uh, something like spoke diameter. And we'll give this something like 0.375. And actually, while I'm on the equations uh, chart, let's go um, spoke offset. And this will be spoke diameter. And we'll add in a open parenthesis, divide that by 2, and then say plus 0.05. Five, right, we'll add 50 thou. And so we'll want to offset the spoke. And I can do that, hopefully, if I close this up. Referencing these points, I'm going to say equals spoke offset. Great. Now, no matter what size we make the spoke, we'll have consistent spacing and we won't get zero thickness errors. Okay, with that being done, uh, let's jump back into the sketch. I'm going to make a three-point spline, and of course you can do this with two-point splines as well. In fact, since it's easy to do a three-point spline, let me just demonstrate a two-point spline. We'll make this tangent, and I'm going to make a reference center line. Uh, I'll arbitrarily have it be horizontal, because why not? We'll make this tangent. Right? You can make this any profile you want, and you can make it simple and complex. You can have it go out and kind of do a double hourglass shape. That'd be kind of cool. So when, when designing something like this, your um, sky is the limit. We're going to give this a tangent relation. And a final ending solid line also. The tangent relation, right? So we got this sort of hourglass shape. Now I can um, space this out by going from this point up here. So I have two consecutive construction lines. We're going to give them an equal relation. 
and go horizontal. Finally, um, I want these to be collinear and equal. And there we've got a relatively even updating sort of, I guess, reverse hourglass shape. And I can make that really any profile I want to. I think it'd look better if it's kind of tall. So we'll give that a try. And that, that shouldn't look too bad. All right, so we've got this profile. I'll control eight. We'll grab the center line. And I can make these horizontal, these little endpoints here. Perfect. Oh, that looks pretty cool right there. Okay. Now, in the interest of time, I won't fully constrain this, um, but you, you get the idea of how it can be. We're going to grab the center line, features, actually surfaces, because we're going to make a reference surface and we're going to revolve this surface. So there is our revolved surface. And let's get started on the next thing. I can hide this temporarily. Hide. And I want to sketch on this face. So I'm going to create something that is uh, bound to the very outer diameter of the space. And there's, there's several ways to do it. We can even do an extruded surface, but I guess I'll just stay consistent um, with kind of the theme of sweeps that we've been doing, or, or sweeps and revolves. And so I'm going to create a path here, surfaces. We're going to sweep from here to here, really making a surface like this. You can sweep it like I'm doing. You can do a filled surface. You can do an extruded surface. Sky's the limit. Now, uh, I want to perhaps sketch on this face. So sketch. Actually, you know what? I don't need to sketch on that face. Instead, I'm going to unhide by using Shift-Tab. And you ha your mouse has to be over where the invisible thing is to get it to show. But you should shift tab, or you can come to the history tree and hide and show something uh, either way. And on the front plane, I'm going to sketch. And I'm going to start at my top of my surface. Looks like I can't grab it immediately. So we're going to make this coincident, just like that. And now we're going to grab this tangent line and we're going to make it coincident. Now I've got uh, sort of the cool part to do. I think this is my personal favorite. I'll open up my equations and create another variable. We'll call that spoke twist. And we'll give this a value of 180. Uh, whatever value you want to give it, make sure it's below 360. That can be changed later, but um, as of right now, you have to be careful. All right, so we're going to go surfaces, swept surface. We'll grab this edge, this path, and uh, under options, we can um, specify a twist value. It defaults to degrees. So we're going to say equals, and whoops, looks like we cannot add a global variable there. So I'm going to put 180 degrees in there. Okay. So there's our 180 degree twist. To get that global variable that we put in there, double click and you'll notice an angle in blue pops up, right? So you double click on that and you say equals global variables and you'll say spoke twist. All right, the initial turn that, that we've entered in has to be less than 360, but now we can make it over 180. I don't know why that is, I'm not a programmer, so I don't think I can specify why. But now I can say something like 720, and we twist 700, 720 degrees. So that looks like it is working well. Uh, let's finish up this little portion right here. I think what I'll do is uh, on the front plane, make another sketch, make a line. And I can go from this center point to this center point. And now 
I think I can simply surfaces, swept surface from this edge along this path, and we're good. So again, I'm going to use the tab key, tab this off and tab off my base, and I can see I've got a nice surface and I have sort of these abrupt transitions. So let's smooth that out, and what I'll do is first knit my surface, select the three surfaces I've created, and now I can say fill it and fill it. And why don't we make relatively large fillets? Yeah, that, that looks pretty cool, but uh, we'll go with half inch. That seems appropriate. And with these fillets created, I can now, again, shift tab. There we go. And <clears throat> in fact, I'll tab off the base. Um, and what I'll do is make a 3D sketch. And we want to convert entities with intersection curve. And we're going to choose all the surfaces that we've created. I think there's five. And then all these sections of surface as well. So with all these surfaces highlighted, we hit the check, and it produces a curve where these surfaces intersect. Now, I can again tab off and hide these features, and I can shift tab to turn my base back on. And now all I have to do is, is a relatively simple sweep features uh, to rebuild to get out of the sketch. And I'm going to say sweat boss base, circular profile, and we want our diameter to be, I don't think I, yeah, I don't, oh yeah, spoke diameter. And uh, we choose our path, and that's our sweep. I am inclined to say it's quite a beautiful sweep if I do so, if I do say so myself. Wow, that's actually hard to say. So we're going to say features linear pattern, circular pattern. Uh, let's see if a geometry pattern will work because you really get better performance that way. So we selected our face as a direction and right here equals global variables and we're gonna say oh uh, it looks like we don't have a spoke number so let's create that magic equations spoke number and we'll say we want to have that initially six spokes. From here, um, let's go to circular pattern, this direction, uh, geometry pattern. We're going to try doing it off of a feature, and I think it's properly bonded to this. We'll, we'll see, but I'm quite certain a feature geometry pattern is the best way to go. From here, equals global variables, spoke number. Again, you don't have to use global variables. It's just super nice to be able to watch it update live. You know, you might say, well, that's more twisty than I initially wanted. And instead of going and trying to edit all these, you know, arbitrary dimensions, I can just pull up some of these more important to visual dimensions. And I can say, oh, instead of 720, I want it less twisty, I'll go 360. You know, that could be something more like someone's looking for. They can say, well, the spokes look too thick, more thick than I wanted. So I can say 0.25. And then, you know, they thin out. So you can make this however you want to, and you can even add dimensions to make it higher or lower. So that being said, um, that is, a, I think, a pretty good example of how to use SOLIDWORKS surfacing to further your interests in making um, rather complex geometries. Imagine trying to make this profile in a 3D sketch. It would be uh, ridiculous. So surfaces lend an amazing helping hand um, into, into all of this. I think what I also want to do is add an appearance so we'll choose the sweep, 
And in addition, I'll choose circular pattern. And we'll go over here and choose maybe something like a nice brass. We'll do a polished brass up here to make it look kind of you know fancy. And then back on this revolve, we'll choose an appearance. And maybe we'll do something like brush brass. So anyway, there, there's a half decent uh, base for you. And one more thing that may be of interest to some users is um, you can get stuck with these tangent lines. And although you can change your graphics uh, to sort of take them out and look a little bit more smooth, um, some users may want to avoid having those sections all together. There is a way to do it. I don't actually uh, think it's that useful because sometimes you may need to reference off of a tangent point for some reason. But if this is relevant to you, you can uh, go into the sweep and look at the 3D sketch that we've made with the uh, intersections and edit the sketch. And what you can do is uh, tools, sketch tool, or spline tools rather, fit spline. And you indeed can select all the elements of your sketch. There it is. And with this whole sketch selected, and now we have a single spline that takes the place of our sketch. And as we rebuild along this single spline, notice we have no more tangent lines, even with our graphics mode to show tangent lines, and that's because we're sweeping along a single entity and there's no sketch points to create a tangent point. So that's a way to smooth out the lamp. Um, again, I don't think it's, it's that useful for most users' needs, though. I hope this video was helpful. Uh, if it was, please subscribe. That's the best way to help me back, and I'll see you in the next video.